up YouTube. So today we are playing a bit of 30 car shuffle because well I've got the next 12 days off of work and uh, the plan is to work on one of them but I need to move everything around to do it and I need to get my bit of uh, non-motivation out of the garage. So let's get started on that. I've all actually I've already kind of started on let me show you. What's going on? I want to show my toy. No, are you going to show them your toy? You want? She's my YouTuber. Yeah, I was trying to avoid saying those words. Yeah. Sorry. Because <laughs> she's, you can just barely understand. Sorry, uh, you gonna help me move the cars? All right. We'll get ready to go get in the car. So here's where we're at so far. As you can see, the MG is in the garage, but the MG is parked where I actually want the Celica parked. So the MG can't stay here, and. As you'll notice, that looks like a car. Yeah. That is a lie. <laughs> I have not done anything but set the hood and fenders on it because we're going to move it outside. I want to hang on. If you want to do it, then go aim it at the Cadillac. Oh. Or uh, do you want to get ready to? You want to get ready to drive the car? You want to sit in this one while we move it? All right. Well, you can get ready to do that. So what we're doing is we're moving this up front where beside where the MG was. No, that is not an idea on the MG. The tire is just setting there. Because uh, I need this bit of non-motivation out of sight, out of mind, kind of, for a minute. Because I'm, I'm at another frustration point with it where I'm tired of looking at it. I am tired of thinking about it every time I walk out here so it needs to go not here for a minute so I can focus on something else and mess with something I kind of want to work on see if I can actually because that the goal for this is way more involved than the goal for that the goal for that is I want to make the brakes work and I want to make the engine do the vroom vroom noises while I'm off work that that's it I'm not trying to make that a driver not trying to make everything else work just Vroom, vroom, stop, stop. That's it. So this needs to move. And that needs to move over here. Because I still want the Celica inside while we're gone. Because uh, we've got Beat the Creek in about four days. And uh, that's going to be three and a half days. Not working on anything. And then I've got about another four days after that. That I'm off work still. So... A lot's going to happen to that in the next three days, and then the three days following Beat the Creek is going to also be a lot of that, if I don't bring the Cadillac in and do some work on it too. So, but all right, let's get this moved. Kind of weird to not see a Corolla sitting there, but uh, hey, <laughs> at least now I can get other things moved around. Someone's liking the fact that it's not there, and she's stuck on the hose. Don't look so upset about it. You're the one that drove on it. <laughs> Alright. Next step is we're getting all this cleaned up quick. And this is getting moved to here. Well, Selleck is back in. A6 is parked where it needs to be. Truck's back up front. Crawl is where it needs to be. And this is in the garage. Everything is where everything needs to be now. Dad. And she has flowers. All flowers. <laughs> yes. And she's froze because she can see herself on camera. <laughs> so what's going on? Do you have tall flowers? Do you yeah. find some really tall dandelions? Yeah. And I see small fat growth. Yeah? And I see all growth. Yeah. Well, that's good. You want to save those ones for Stuffy? So he uh, can eat them? No. No? They're for a kid. They're for a kid? Yep. You're going to eat them? No. That'd be weird. Can I eat food? Yeah, but Stuffy eats those, so those are food. Yeah. So technically you're holding food. 
Yeah, but Stuffy thinks those are food. Those are flowers? Yeah. Do you think they're pretty? Yeah. yeah. It is for a kid. Are they you know flowers for a kid? Yeah. You gonna show them to mom when mom gets here? Yes. Yeah. Sissy, you also have a short one in there though too. I had two. Yeah. This one's pretty. You got all the flowers. Yeah, even short one. I got a short one. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> all right. Now Dad's got to talk about the car some, okay? Okay? Bye, I guess. <laughs> All right. Well, kids went back in the house. So, before I even start tearing into anything, I need to stop and figure out. Apparently, the wife is home. That's what I got to stop and figure out. I'll be back. All right. Got that all taken care of. So... Before I even start tearing into anything, I got to figure out what I do know and what I do know that I don't know. Um, and kind of go from there. Things that I know that I do know is I do know from what I was told, it does run. And by it does run means it had points in it. And Ryan said if you put fuel to it, it would start. So it runs. I know that. He says it runs really well. I he idled it a little bit, I think, with, like, a gas can, and uh, it ran fairly well. I do know that master cylinder is shot. And I have a replacement, and I have new rubber lines for front and rear. I don't know what is going on with these brake lines here, because there is one that looks like it had a compression fitting end on it that I'm not seeing anywhere. And another one that has a compression fitting end on it. And one that doesn't have one that very clearly was in a hole somewhere. I just don't know which one. So i got to talk to Ryan maybe. And find out from him what's going on with that. Um, from there, I don't know if the calipers are good. I'm hoping they are. I don't know exactly... What all parts and stuff I have back here. I know this is not everything though. There is more underneath of there. Um, I do know it has a gas tank. Because mm, there it is. Um, and I know that none of this is bolted to the car. So... The things that I don't know, though, are condition of transmission, condition of the brakes outside of the fact that they don't work because of the master cylinder. Um, and condition of the rear end. While Ryan did say it seemed like it was okay, because this was a wire wheel car, and as you can see, it does not have wire wheels on it. He did everything to swap... Um, the non-wire wheel hubs onto the car all the way around because I didn't want the wire wheel stuff he did. Um, then what else was there? I know the radiator is decent. I don't know how any of the wiring is in the car realistically either. Uh, and I don't know how... I don't know what I'm going to do about seats. And I don't know if the gauges work. I know I should have a majority of the stuff to do, like, windows and things. I just don't know how big of a hurry I am with any of that. So, because the goal, like I said, the goal for this week, or two weeks, basically, isn't to uh, make this a driving car. It's more or less to make it a moving car to where I know I can hit the key in it. It starts. I can move it around the property and I can start figuring out the rest of it from there. Um, Ryan is working on parting out a GT that is slightly older. So it's a chrome bumper car. The chrome bumper cars have a completely different front cross member that lets the front end of the car set pretty significantly lower 
than this does right now and i believe the rear leaf springs let the rear set lower i think so i'm talking to him about getting those parts so i can lower it that little bit and then running some different springs in the front and some lowering blocks in the rear to really get this thing as low as i want and i've got a different set of wheels and tires for it that i want to put on um I don't know what I'm going to do about the top, if anything. I probably, honestly, I'm really debating on not really worrying about making the interior finished. I think I'm going to work on getting rid of everything that's broken. I'll worry about patching the floor. Um, I'm going to figure out a set of seats, which may be the cloth ones that are up there. I don't know yet. I haven't got that far. Um... I'm probably not going to throw the windows back in in a hurry. I don't have a top for it that is in good shape because there is a top here, but it is brittle, cracked, and just ruined. So it won't matter if I try using it or not. It won't do anything. And the frame, I don't know the condition of. So, but yeah. <laughs> There's a lot I don't know about this car uh, when I got it from Ryan. <laughs> it was kind of a... He wanted the 70 MGB back, uh, the 70, the red GT. He wanted it back, and he kind of didn't want to mess with this. And this kind of came to me. That went to him. Some cash traded hands somewhere along the lines, and we did kind of discover as we went that this wasn't in quite as good a shape as what me and him thought it was. But it is in better shape than the red GT was. So, and it's also in better shape than the yellow GT that he's going to part out. So, I'm just trying to figure out how, basically how we're keeping the promise to the person that he bought this off of. Um, she didn't want to see it get parted out. And she didn't want to see it get scrapped. So... We are trying, Ryan was trying to do that, but he just couldn't get into it because he's not, he's not a fan of rubber bumpers. He's not a fan of convertibles. Um, it's just not what he's into in the G, in the MGs. He prefers the GTs. He prefers chrome bumper. So this thing had a lot going on that he just, he wasn't into it. Um, me, on the other hand, I don't mind rubber bumpers, although I do prefer prefer the chrome bumper i actually prefer bumperless over either one um i just think it looks better it's not safer not by any means but i think it looks better and my original plan was to rip this engine and transmission out and drop in something like you know a 22r that's back there in this car or uh, engine and transmission out of a Miata or a rotary swap, something along those lines. But this car is not as good as I hoped. Sorry, my hand was doing the cramping thing. Um, so yeah, this car wasn't as good as me or Ryan either one thought it was. And that put me in a space of where I don't want to go dumping a bunch of money into it. But it has a perfectly good running mg engine in it already there's no point in ripping that out just to uh ah i gotta switch arms just to drop something else in when realistically for what i want to do with it at this point it don't need anything different something different is just going to maybe make it more fun because, uh, uh, like I said, the list of things was some really off-the-wall stuff. Like, we were talking about a 22R. We were actually talking about me getting, like, an entire little Toyota truck. Ripping the wiring harness out of it, all the gauges, um, engine, transmission, everything. And putting it all into the MG. Because that would solve every problem an MG has. That would get rid of the crappy wiring. That would get rid of all the crappy switches. That would get rid of the 90 horsepower and four speed uh it, it would have made this a lot more fun and slightly more heavier and if i went with like one of the like the early 90s um toyota mini trucks 
like the ones that predate the Como, I think they're like the T1000 or something like that. Uh, if I would have went with one of them, well, I would have had fuel injection and a little bit more power and a five-speed transmission. And just uh, there's a lot of pluses to doing that. But if I was going to do it, I wanted to do it with a clean shell. This isn't as clean as we thought it was. Um, I think I've shown that in some other videos. That this just wasn't what we thought it was. Have I said that enough? This isn't what I thought it was? Um, but yeah. So, at this point, I just want to experience this car. And see if this car is going to be like the MG I really want to work on. Or if this is a, we are piecing it together, making it a thing, and trading it on to something else. We'll see. All right, my buddy Ryan stopped by. Um, we didn't work on anything. But he brought me the screws I need for the distributor that I didn't realize I lost both of. <laughs> a rotor button that I didn't realize I lost. So that's going to help me with the car. And he enlightened me on a few things that I wasn't aware of. Um, one of them being I wasn't sure how the brake line system worked. He, he walked me through that. He also told me he thinks the clutch master cylinder is bad, which is something he didn't tell me before. Or I don't remember him telling me, I should say. Um, and we kind of pulled everything that was in here, out of here. Uh, went through it all, and I didn't realize exactly how complete some of the stuff in this car was. And we got talking about his parts car, and he's actually got a good set of seats in his parts car. Um, he's got a few other little, he's got like a nice dash in his parts car and everything. So I'm gonna be getting all that from him to replace <laughs> this poor thing. Um, as well as I'm getting the entire front suspension out of his parts car because his parts car is a chrome bumper car and throwing all of the suspension stuff from that car onto this car will already lower it about an inch and a half, I do believe. Um, and then I can lower it another inch and get down to where I want to be with it. So that'll make me happy. But. After talking to him, though, I need to go to the parts store and possibly have the wife order a thing or two. And uh, we're kind of on a waiting game with some of it then, but not a huge one. So there's your guys' update. <laughs> we go at the start oh, a little miss over there running around got the interior cleaned up so now I can see what's going on with everything here um, you are noisy yeah. you're hard to talk over but yeah the interior is cleaned up um, this floor pan actually isn't that bad like, back here doesn't look great from where the water sat in it, but the rest of it doesn't look too bad. Now, the passenger side, on the other hand, <clears throat> I mean, I can stand on it, and I can feel it flexing underneath of me. So, and I would not want to put my weight up there. So, that definitely needs some attention. Probably a new floor pan. Not something I'm worried about right now. But, at least now we know what we're working with. Uh, so, the side I got to set on. Hang on. Sorry, I had to explain to a little one that, you know, while I know she enjoys the stool, we had to stop with the stool. Dad can't yell over top of it all the time. But, so now we know that that floor pan 
and she is she is currently grumpy at me and doesn't want to be on camera now because of it. But so we know that floor pan needed work. I'm happy the driver side floor pan looks better than I thought it did. Um, the next thing is going to be, I think, since basically none of the front ends bolted on, is I'm going to work on blowing the front end apart. Um, kind of so I can look at everything in a little bit more detail. And, well, kind of so when I get ready to start recording stuff working under there, you guys can see it better. So, on to that. Well, that went about as good as to be expected. Luckily, I didn't hurt anything. Including myself. Didn't hurt myself either. Hood itself, that was a dumb way to take the hood off. Oh, it's done. So, spent a couple minutes off camera trying to pump the clutch. The hell, baby. And it's not doing anything. So, I think... The next step is going to be before I actually do a lot more as far as taking stuff apart is uh, I'm going to have to make a trip up to O'Reilly's. Now I have the wife because I already got rear wheel cylinders. I might as well have her go ahead and order me front calipers and clutch slave and master and the soft line for the slave cylinder and just have all new hydraulic throughout the whole car because um, either way it doesn't matter whether i end up doing more with it or someone else does more with it later that all needs done anyway so and the calipers i don't believe change from early to late so swapping whatever calipers i get now onto the Early cross member and knuckles and everything shouldn't be an issue. Um, so at least that's the hope. Because I tried. Here, I'll show you. I filled the reservoir all the way up and I pumped the crap out of it just to see if anything would happen. Because my old blue MG, the pedal would bleed off. It was very common with that car. Like, if you let it set for a couple months without touching it, you go back out and it wouldn't have a clutch pedal. So you'd top off the fluid, pump it for about two minutes, and you'd have very solid, very good clutch pedal again. Um, I'm pretty sure it was just a pinhole like in the rubber line or something. Um, it never failed, so I just didn't worry about it. This one, after about 10 minutes, the level barely dropped. And then, like I said, with the blue, uh, the blue MG, my old 80, I think I said Celica before my 80 MG. You pump it like that, and then you need to refill the reservoir. So, because it sucked down about half the reservoir, refilling its own line and everything. Well, this isn't doing any of that. This is just the the reservoir staying here. It hasn't went up or down. Uh, some of it might have come out. I do see some air bubbles over here, but yeah. it's it's showing signs that the system does not want to work so i'm just not going to fight it i'm just going to get new <laughs> as much as that's not what i want to do um she said this, the points and condenser and stuff should be here today so the hope is is to get that stuff hear it run and then i'm going to have her order that stuff today or tomorrow um, just because the only way this video is happening is with those parts. 
So I might as well have them and just call it a day. So may also bug my buddy Ryan about coming in and at least picking up the passenger side seat out of the car that he has. <laughs> Poor dashboard. Uh, kind of growing on the whole not having outside door handles too. Just it's not getting annoying at all the more I talk about it. <laughs> um, yeah. The, the, that's where I'm at. I need to get those parts. I need to get some stuff ordered. So I'm going to shut up because this video so far has been a lot of me rambling. Not a lot of me working. points that I thought were bad from the other MG that weren't bad. There was another electrical problem with that car. I put them in here so because I'm uh, she said that everything doesn't show up till tomorrow and well they were laying on the workbench and I was like well fuck it I might as well use them. Um, see what happens. And it has spark. If uh, come over here Turn the key. We have cranking. The only thing we don't seem to have is gas. There's no gas coming from the filter. You come back here. Shh. Well, I can hear the pump trying, but I don't think it has any gas to try with. So. Like I said, Ryan said he had it running, but it doesn't appear to want to run right now. But that also appears to be because, well, it has no gas. And I tried. I don't know what I did with the bottle. I tried spraying it the life with some brake clean, and, well, I can't get enough in there well enough to get through this whole contraption to get up into the intake and actually, you know, 
do what I want it to do. So, I think the next thing we're gonna try is to go get a. You seen the cat? Oh, good. I think we're gonna try the other old clicky clack pump that I thought was another issue on the other MG that was not an issue. Uh, good luck trying to pet that cat. Good luck with that. <laughs> um, we're going to attempt to just run it off of like a five gallon gas can for the moment and uh, go from there. Because as long as it starts, I have no issue ordering other parts for it. Once I know it runs, I'm good. There we go. I uh, can call that running flawlessly at the moment, but it runs. That's a start. <laughs> Get it? That's a start. Uh, so now I don't feel nearly as scared to order some things. Although I do not think the firing order is maybe necessarily correct at the moment. Maybe I put the cap on backwards. Not sure. I'm going to, to double check that. Um, the points also are nowhere near adjusted like any kind of proper. They just were a, they work, and I chucked cap on. So, <clears throat> and as you guys can see, it's running off a gas can over here because the fuel pump in the back don't want to work. Um, or at least it's not picking anything up, which is very likely either the pickup tube in the gas tank or the pump itself is just not working. I don't know which one yet. I'll figure that out later. Um. For what I wanted to know right now, I know enough. Um, as you guys can hear, it doesn't sound like it's firing on all four cylinders. So, but it is firing, so that tells me it is working. So I just don't know whether maybe, maybe a couple of the plugs are just bad. Maybe the, <laughs> maybe things are just that far off. I don't, I don't know. Um, because it did like spit and sputter and pop a couple times. So it is, it could go either way. But that's, that's what we needed to know. I don't know how much more we're going to get done before Beat the Creek. Um, we got two days till we get around to leave for that. And I still got some packing and stuff to do, which you guys are going to see in another video. Um, so yeah. But at least we got that far beforehand. So now I can more confidently order some parts and get that figured out. I may go ahead before I get too crazy, because um, I had her look everything up. It was going to come to like 300 bucks for all the hydraulic stuff I, that I don't have new already. So I think we're going to look and see if maybe the bleeders are break free and try bleeding the clutch before I go spending money on all that and see what happens. So, yeah. But hey, it runs. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So, it runs a lot better when it's firing on all four cylinders. Uh, I don't know if I did it or if my buddy Ryan did it because he doesn't remember doing it. I don't remember doing it. Um, but he also, like me and him were talking, he only really ever had, I think, the cap off for like a couple seconds. So, nine times out of ten, I did it. Uh, cylinder two and three, the plug wires were swapped. And uh, that explains a lot about the way it was running. But I've also discovered another problem. So as you can see, there's a puddle on the floor. Well, that puddle is gas coming out of the vent tube. Because um, these things have a vent tube that is connected kind of like a return line um, from the carb. That way, like, the carb doesn't vapor lock or something like that, but if the float sticks open... Instead of it flooding the engine, it floods the charcoal canister. Kind of a wonky design, but at the same time, at least it doesn't flood the engine. Um, although I think it kind of did there, and that's why it started a little hard. Uh, yeah. But, so that's something I gotta do. But I think I have a very easy solution to that, and that's laying right there. That is a slightly later model carb that came off of a running car that I know ran well. So that's probably going to end up on here, uh, because... Well, this car seems to have a very good ignition system. The car that carburetor came off of did not, and I chased a lot of issues on that car, including that carburetor, uh, because I thought everything was a fueling issue because I knew these big SU carbs aren't as good as, say, a Weber. So... MG person, I am sorry. I know I just offended you by saying an SU carburetor is not as good as a Weber. The single big, like, Zenith Stromberg SU style carburetors are not as good as a Weber. This car's got a Weber. I absolutely love it. I understand how to tune it. It works great. These things are a pain. Um, now, the older style dual SU carbs, those things are amazing. I would love to have that set up on here. I know that is what makes these things run absolute best. But a good running Weber is still really good on these. So, but I have that carb laying around. So that carb will probably end up on here if I can't figure out why the choke's sticking on. They're not choke. But why the float is sticking on this one. So, all right, enough of that. But as you can see, it is up on... All four jack stands now because I have the front calipers ordered, the brake master cylinder ordered, the brake slave cylinder, or not brake, but the, the clutch master cylinder ordered, and the clutch slave cylinder and rubber line ordered. Um, then I already have the rear wheel cylinders, rear hose, and front brake hoses already here. So, I think the goal is, I don't know if it's going to happen today, because I need to get the RAV4 in for the oil change before we go to beat the creek, and I've only got about a day and a half before we leave. Um, so, I don't know how much more I'm going to get done on this today. Uh, my big goal, I think, at this point is get the wheels pulled off and start pulling apart the brakes. I don't know whether I'm going to start on the front or the rear. You guys will be there either way. Um, so I can make room for the new parts so when they get here, I can just kind of throw the stuff at it and, uh, see what happens. So, but that's kind of where I'm at. It's kind of the goal. Um, oh, this is terrible. This is oddly solid for looking so rusty. So that's something else we're going to work on in other videos. I go through, cut out patches like that. Weld in some new sheet metal. Um, these were already welded in at one point. They're fairly solid. Uh, that's something I know we talked about is where I was saying, like, this car is not as solid as I like it to be. It's like, it's got issues like that. I mean, you can very clearly see, well, someone welded these in, but I wouldn't say they did exactly the most spectacular job in the world. Then you come to this side. This side makes me and my buddy Ryan think this thing's been in a wreck because 
This is all beat to hell. Um, this whole structure through here is actually very beat up. Even though the front of the car seems straight, that's rough. This right here, you can see where it has been stitch welded back together from where it ripped. Um, again, caved in. Had a patch put in here. Had a patch put in here. Had a new rocker put on. I mean, very clearly, there's some body work someone started there. There's some body work back here that was never finished. Um, the trunk seems to be one of the very few untouched places in the car. And then, like, if you look in here, you can see where they've done <laughs> some not great body work on these quarter panels. Because while it looks smooth out here, you can very, very clearly tell it is not smooth out there or inside there. So... But yeah, so there's little things like that that just kind of make me go, you know, I don't know how much money and effort I really want to throw out this car, but it is good enough to make into a, a nice little driver. It's not necessarily good enough to want to throw a bigger engine in and a better transmission and all that. So, yeah. All right. I'll bring you guys back when I'm actually doing something. since we touched the MG um, and I'm not gonna lie for this video the goal has kind of changed because I have found more wrong with car than I originally thought so I think the goal for this video is just straight gonna be get it running hopefully off the tank and move on from there um, if I can get it that far to where I can reliably reliably reach in hit the key and it start I'll be I'll be happy um, and then the next video, considering I'm just now kind of getting all the brake parts in, um, the next video we'll go through, we'll do the clutch stuff and the brakes. And make that its own video. Um, probably do the front wheel bearings as well then. Which is kind of why I'm like I'm at a point where I'm stretching myself too thin money-wise and time-wise trying to get it all in one video and it not be like a two-hour long video when it's all said and done. So um, we're going to get that done. Uh, that being said, I did pick these up so we now have some seats to put in the thing that are actually meant for it they're not in perfect condition but they're in we're going to call it good enough condition these are nice enough i can throw them in the car they are going to work and we'll be happy um then over here uh, uh we're opening the garage door because it is hot in here Whew. it is warm in here um on the disaster side of the garage. Uh, I also dug out my spare grill that is beat the high hell, but it'll work for this. It'll make me feel a little bit better. Um, the pump I was originally using in the last set of videos, which is right here, it died. It no longer wants to pump fuel out of it. Um, the pump back there was already dead. So, we now have uh, this pump. <laughs> so, 
Uh, pump number three is hopefully the charm. Uh, we're going to work on getting that mounted back there where it needs to be. And attempting to pull fuel out of the tank. Did me leaving the battery hooked up kill it? No. All right. We still have battery. <laughs> so that's going to be the goal now, I think, is to get up underneath there, get to that pump, put the other one in, get it plumbed up, and hope to God that uh, it'll run again. Uh, so if we get that done, we'll probably see about grabbing everything to do an oil change on it before we do too much more and uh go from there so because like i said i i just the more i looked into things the more stuff i found wrong the more stuff i found wrong the less i wanted to i don't want to say the less i wanted to work on it but the less i wanted to push to get everything in the one video so because realistically all that was going to do was make for a really long kind of crappy video and i didn't want to do that to you guys i wanted to try to make something presentable I know that's a crazy thought, but that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, so, with all that being said, time to jump under the car and see what it's going to take to get that pump off. So, I'm seeing a bolt there. I have a feeling that's the bolt holding the pump on. But, i got to actually get under the car and find out. And it appears I'd be correct that that is, in fact, the bolt holding the pump on. Right there it is. So... We're going to get that undone, get this line disconnected, and start figuring out how exactly we are hooking it into the other pump. Well, the car had me excited for a second because I unhooked the line from this one. And uh, I hooked up power to it. And I'll be damned if fuel didn't start pumping out. Well, it did, but the problem is, it doesn't matter anyway. Uh, it only lasted for about, about I'm going to say maybe less than a minute uh, that it did because it seemed like the moment the pump started getting warm, it stopped flowing fuel. Uh, it was sending just enough to keep the car idling, but nothing passed there, which leads me to one of two things is going on. Either A, the pickup tube which is very clearly leaking at the moment, um, has rust holes in it farther up the line, like farther up in here, uh, which is very common on these. And it can't pick fuel up below a certain level. Or that right there is letting it actually suck some air in. Or this pump is actually dying and it only works for about, you know, a minute until it gets warm because it's not actually flowing enough fuel to cool itself off. So, back to plan B. We'll just put that pump in and see how see how that goes. Uh, first, we're just going to uh, plumb it in here and see what happens when we turn it on before we mount it and everything. Because part of my fear is also that being up there, it will be mounted too high and it will actually not draw fuel either because that will have it pretty significant ways above the fuel tank, which these things don't really like. So, now to figure that out. Now, this one is pumping and it is flowing consistently up front, but I did notice until I cracked the line off to let it let all the air out of the system, it would not let it flow all the way up here. So I am curious if that is going to be some form of another problem we're going to run into is if there is any air in this system that the, uh, the pump itself cannot prime. Now the other pump didn't seem like it wanted to keep up. So that was another problem all in itself. But this pump doesn't seem to be having that problem because I can have this thing, it seems like setting it like 4,500 RPM, which is realistically about all the more i want to crank it um and the fuel level doesn't drop in the filter or at least not by a significant enough amount to make me concerned that i'm going to run out of fuel while driving it and it does slowly start to build back up so that pump does appear to be keeping up at least when the car is not under a significant load now put the car under a significant load that may change i don't know 
we're going to have to kind of play it by ear and see. Uh, I also um, tightened up the fitting at the back, so that seemed to be another part of the issue. Um, so now the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to get that pump up in place, bolted down, grounded out, and wired in, and see if it still continues to pump fuel. Because um, part of me is worried that with it not being below the tank, that it is going to then start causing a whole other issue, which means I've got to figure out a way to actually get that below the tank, um, which could be kind of hard. <laughs> uh, and if I do figure out at some point that the issue is the tank itself, realistically, we're going to ditch the stock tank altogether and probably just go to like a 10 gallon fuel cell in the trunk and call it a day. Uh, because realistically another tank for this car costs as much as the whole car cost me so i'm just not not willing to shell out that on a gas tank right now um because i mean realistically i've got i think now remember i don't pay full price for parts because the wife works at the parts store but a lot of what i have didn't come from the parts store that's like a 60 dollars pump i think i paid like 45 um <laughs> There is, all in this box, there is a clutch slave cylinder, new front calipers, uh, there is a new clutch master cylinder in the car, new brake master cylinder laying up there. Oh, these were parts for it too, weren't they? Yeah. I've got new uh, front and rear wheel cylinders for it laying around here somewhere. Those did come from the parts store. Um, and then there's a bag inside with new rear adjusters and a rear hardware kit all for this car. So right now I want to say I am all in. <laughs> I'm about, I think $250, $300 into the parts so far for this car, which I only have 500 in getting the car. So <laughs> I, I don't got a lot of value in it and it's already starting to add up real quick. So I'm trying not to sink a lot more money into it. And then realistically, me and my buddy Ryan were talking, everything I'm getting from him is going to cost me about another 300 bucks. So I'm already at what I paid for the car. I'm basically doubling down on what I have in it. Because um, I'm getting the seats, a whole other complete dashboard with gauges, and an early model front cross member now the cross member might not make a lot of sense to most of you because i mean well there's nothing wrong with that one why change it well the early model cross members the spring pockets and everything set i think it's about an inch higher so they lower the car about an inch <laughs> and uh i i want that <laughs> I, I would like to get the car setting about an inch lower overall well, I'd, I'd like to get it sitting about two and a half inches lower overall. And a great place to start with that is the front cross member. Because the front cross member itself lowers it pretty significantly. Then with a shorter spring, it lowers it even more. That's that's kind of the goal we're going for here. Um, and then I'm just going to put drop blocks in the rear. I, I'm really hoping by the time it's all said and done, we have a running driving MG for about... 12 to 1300 bucks i really don't want to have much more than that in it because then at that point now we are really starting to break what this thing is probably really worth um if we're not careful uh because you could argue once it's a running and driving mg it's a two to three thousand dollar car or you could argue that it's still an unfinished project it's only worth 1500 bucks so uh, it's <sighs> got to play it careful on where I go from here especially if this is something I decide I'm not keeping because if I'm not keeping it I don't want to go crazy on what I spend on it um but I do want to do something cool with it so it's there is so many things I can do that are going to break a budget on this car it's not even funny um yeah all right enough of me rambling I'm going to get that fuel pump in and we'll see what happens after that Okay, it's hard to see, but the pump is up there and in place. 
uh, I'm going to call that ground okay, even though I think it's shit. So it's either going to be shit that's functional or complete shit that doesn't work at all. It's bolted in. I am concerned that it's a little high, but we're going to see if it works. It's running. Car starts. And the filter empties out. Fills back up. calling that a mild success that is that is what i wanted to have done by the end of this video so i think that might be video done for the week um yeah because i realistically these brakes are going to take so much more time to actually get done uh that i don't want to try doing them in this video and trying to do anything with interior or anything like that until after i get that stuff done it doesn't make any sense either uh, so, yeah. Let's, let's start it one more time. Let's see if it's repeatable. Let's see if it's repeatable. Key on. Pump is running. Car starts. I gotta say... That's got to be the easiest starting MG I have had to date. Because as uh, long as the system doesn't bleed off overnight, I've never had another MG that you didn't even need to touch the throttle to get it to start. Uh, this thing just snaps right to life. And I didn't do anything crazy beforehand to get it to start for the first time today either. It literally, once it had gas, it started. So... I would say this is going to be a solid running little car. Uh, the float did stick the other day, so I think we're going to probably going to run this line just straight down to the ground for the moment instead of hooking it back into here just because I don't trust the whole idea of that being back into the system. Um, we will probably go to the O'Reilly's, get an oil filter, and get some oil, do an oil change on it. Give us some fresh 20W50 to chew on, and... Uh, Start getting brakes on it on the next video, because uh, that's the next big thing that it needs. So, yeah, rear end doesn't make any noise. Transmission, when it's not running, shifts in and out of gear just fine. I mean, we could throw it in gear and start it and see if everything works that way, too. So, let's, let's try that quick. First...
all the gears seemed to work. Uh, and that was doing all that with no clutch. Because, well, there's nothing hooked to the clutch currently. So, eh. That's the upside with some, some of these older manual transmissions, especially when they're synchronized. There's no weight on anything, so... You can kind of pop it into a gear, and it'll go. So, because there's nothing stopping it it's not necessarily a good thing to do especially like if you try doing it and it wants to grind it didn't want to grind in first and second and i knew to shut it off in third because well i had already tried recording that and apparently I forgot to hit record so i knew the moment i tried going into third it was going to grind that's why i went ahead to shut it off and i already did it in reverse too i know reverse is working so yeah i would say it's a uh, brakes and a clutch and i think we got a driver uh, not a good drive. You know, I can put it around the driveway driver uh, <laughs> because we still won't have lights or a front end or, you know, brake lights or tail lights or turn signals or a windshield or an interior or, you know, or 80% of things that make a car a car besides running and stopping. So, um, but depending on how far we decide to go on this, I've got a paint idea in my head. Um, we will, we'll see if we get that far with this though. I just, I don't know if we're going to, I, I just don't know. Cause I don't, I'm not necessarily in love with this car. Uh, it's hot out here today. So uh, my time investment with it, it's kind of a weird thing for me. Normally if I don't love something like this, it's, I would get it just barely past where it is right now. Throw it together, make it look kind of like a car, say it's kind of a car come pick it up with a trailer and get it out of my driveway. Um, but at the same time, I also feel like the more of it I piece together, the more of it I may start liking. So the whole, I don't want to do a lot with it might change. Um, I don't know. Uh, you guys will have to let me know what you guys want to see me do. Cause like I said, I got ideas for lowering it in my head. I've got ideas for a paint scheme in my head. Um, it's just going to be a ratty driver, so it's, like, I don't want to do anything too crazy, but I'm also, is this something you guys want to see more of, I guess is what I'm going for. So, let me know in the comments. So, uh, until next time, you guys enjoy yourselves, have a good weekend, have a good week, wherever, whatever time period you're seeing this in, and, uh, I will have you guys back next time when we are getting some brake work done on this little turd. <laughs> See you then. Bye, guys.